all named the same. What's in this one? I'm not the most uh, business-minded, organized person. Okay. Well, we're live on there. All right. Well, that's good. Um, okay. Close that out. Got it. All right. So let's see here. Uh, let me go and open up the the file that I got the recording in so you know when I I first started trimming I had the old trimming tree out here <laughs> that's what I had to tie my horse to, to for years a tree and then uh the tree got dangerous so we had to cut the tree down and all the shade went with it so I moved around to different places. And uh, finally, I built me this this place out of old barn wood to be able to trim in and put all my tools in. And so uh, that was that was fun, actually. OK, so because um, my horses, what I have is um, basically a very small uh, shed barn. And that's where they, you know, get protection from the storm and all that. You know, I don't have a regular barn um, or even a corral, you know. Um, and I really think that if at all possible, you should make yourself a special place where you trim, where you can kind of have your tools handy and, you know, get you some mats if you can, if you can. It's nice. You know, I'm really blessed with what I did. Let's see here. Can't remember which one it is. Well, let's try this one. Okay, hold on. Let's see, that's the last one. That's Jackie. Okay, uh, okay, where are we at here? Let's see, screen share. Okay, so these are the pictures. Dar, do you see a bunch of little pictures up there? Yeah, yes. okay. Yep. So these are the pictures. Now, why is that? Well, I thought I took pictures of all the feet. Well, anyway, um, uh, like I tell people, you don't have to do all four feet in one day. You know, sometimes you may only be able to manage one. Or maybe you'll just go around and maybe you'll just clean up the frogs. Or maybe you'll just work on one foot. You know, I don't think that you should feel pressured that you have to do uh, any and all four feet. That's just way too much for anybody to do. And... uh well, unless you're a farrier or young, <laughs> okay? Well, even then, you know, unless you, you're usually don't worry about having to do uh, even a whole foot in one day, especially when you just start. Linda, um, sorry, the recording is um, stopped or um, the document stopped. Oh yeah, you don't, I, you don't take the the the, the your succession. Is it okay? Oh yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> I decided not. I'm. I've got it recording on YouTube. Okay. So, so uh, uh, that way, because every time I record it on here, uh, then a lot of times I never get it posted. So if I just do a live YouTube, you know. It'll record it, and there we go. We're done. All right. So anyway, um, uh, I'm just going to go through these. I do before. I'll do before, some during, and some after I trim. Now, this foot, I trim. Just a minute here. Let me. I probably have to do a new share. Yeah. There we go. 
Uh, now I remembered, I couldn't remember why I had this foot first because it's the rear, what foot are you? Let's see, um, left, left foot, I do believe. Yeah, okay, rear left foot. And uh, uh, so I trimmed it a week ago and uh, I wanted to see what it looked like now and so i think that's why i took the pictures first because i was thinking of this I always start with the with the either the right or left front well, let's see which one the left for some reason i start with the left front usually all the time and uh i'm beginning to wonder if maybe we shouldn't alternate that <laughs> You know, so that you're not just focusing and paying total attention to one foot. You know, start with a different foot on occasion instead of the same foot all the time. I don't know. It's just an idea I had. But anyway, so this is one of his problem feet that, uh, that, uh, uh, it, okay, I trimmed out the lateral side here way more then the medial side and so of course that heel ran forward well turned into a false heel because when you don't have a heel buttress um then the wall is not stable the heel buttresses stabilize the wall here and so when you trim that heel buttress down it does a couple things it it moves forward and sometimes it'll also pull it around pull the wall around in that way and uh it'll shove the wall out like that and it looks like a flare but in reality it's um being forced out like a flare okay to me a flare is where you have wall separation like the wall would get real long and be pulled away like that okay this would not be a flare this would be because the heel got trimmed out and it destabilized the wall and it pushed this forward and then it pushed the side of the wall out. Okay, so you wind up having, and everybody's got some form of this on their horses. Sometimes you'll have one foot that just seems to be worse than the others. Um, so this was like his worst foot in that regard. Um, and you can see what it creates is an asymmetrical foot. Like, um, in other words, this side is wider than this side. So this is something I've been working to correct for quite a while. Now, something you'll notice here, because remember, this is uh, anatomically correct. We want to be anatomically and structurally correct i think of structurally correct on the hoof capsule and anatomically correct in the foot like the foot has just like your foot has a specific way it just sits as it is as being your foot whether it's in a shoe or whether you're in the shower or you know run around barefoot or whatever your foot is a certain shape okay well the same with the horse the horse his inner foot is a specific shape and so but in order to maintain his shape he's got to have this hoof capsule growing from it in a specific manner you know, it's got to have this frog stay in here up between the bulbs, supporting the bulbs. It's got to have specific heel buttress pillars here on each side that stabilize the whole wall. And the sole, the sole tapers down like this. See that? That's the way the foot is. And so the bars, they don't need to grow up. They don't really support in that manner it, it you know they have <clears throat> they don't support quite like this because 
well, look at them. They go like this, down like that. And so you'll see the soul curving down like this in a form of concavity. All right. So anyway, so I took pictures of this foot first, which I usually don't. And you can see how this side is pushed out. I've been working on correcting that now for years. I did not trim the frogs on the back feet. And uh, uh, then when I started, I would trim kind of the front ones, but I kind of left the back ones and I trimmed this heel out and it pushed over to the side there. And then the frog, what will happen is this is why you're mapping. This is why we map because we're following the alignment of the internal anatomy let me go find a picture here because we always got to go back to this just a minute here i've got a bunch of just a second here because i want to always go back to what we are trimming to okay which is new share which is this the internal foot the capsule to a degree should be the same a similar image to what you're seeing here on this inner foot you know minus where i cut the hide there and so you know these bars have a specific location and what I want you to see, I want you to see how the soul is not flat across like this. The soul is convex here. It does get concave here, but it's convex there. Now, but I, what I want you to see is see, see the measurement just on the inner heel. Just a minute. Okay, so see the measurement just on the inner heel. Well, obviously, you know, you can still measure a heel by putting it on the hairline here and measuring down. Well, you're obviously going to want more heel than just to right there because you want at least three fourths of an inch. Well, a half to three fourths to an inch of sole growing from the soul corium here. So here, let me annotate real quick here. So you know exactly what you're looking at. Okay, so here's the bar lamina right here. Here's the bar <clears throat> right in here. Okay, right here is where your buttress would grow, right in here. Now the wall goes around over here. Okay, so, so here's the bar, here's the wall, and then there's a big uh, chunk of heel buttress, kind of a triangular shape thing, you know. Oops, wait a minute, just a second. Okay, what happened to my annotate? Why aren't you drawing? Okay, there we go. So you heal buttress here, big old chunk of wall here in a triangular shape that stabilizes. Here's your soul right up here. All this. Now Look at the look at where the bar goes down here. Your wall would be up here. See? Well, you'd actually have some sole out at least that far. Convex sole ridge, and then it gets concave here. So you see how when you're looking at that foot, 
you know, you see them, they say, oh, well, you got to leave the bars so they support the foot. Well, it doesn't look like that's their real job there, does it? Not really. Now they will grow up and support the shape of the soul that's in the soul platform here. You know, well, there's my scribble pictures anyway. So you see how all this looks seamless? You know, and everything has a place. And so that's what we're trying. That's what we use the mapping for and the understanding of what's going on inside this foot to try and help our horses have a good fitting hoof capsule in the right spot. So let me undo this here. Okay, so just kind of go through this a little bit to remind you of what we're doing and why we're doing it and uh why when we learn something we can change say so this was a foot that was sent to me now here's your heels up here they fit right in there see and you got to have some depth so that you have some connection say now when they trim the heels out you lose this depth that's here and the heels get crushed forward see if i find it okay and again here so we know that this foot here just a minute We know that this foot here has a certain shape, right? So when I'm looking at, I should, we should learn how to read what's going on with the coronary band here. See, because the wall can jam up and push it up like this. This coronary band gives, it'll give about this much at least, you know, uh, just to try and help the horse level out when the walls being too long and and too much pressure on the wall and gradually the wall just pushes up the coronary band here okay so that's something we we learn about as well how to relieve that down here so that this will relax and come out and your coronary band will go back down like that so when we look at the front of a hoof when we're we take our pictures see taking pictures is a big main part of your trim washing the feet taking pictures because you're going to be learning what the inner foot looks like and then within reason trying to make boundaries and once you understand hoof growth and how the hoof distorts and how walls jam, how and how this foot moves, <clears throat> then you can just start applying these principles in your trim to try and help your horse straighten some of these out. But we're not, as I always say, we're not trimming a good foot, we're growing a good foot. So, um, so I'm looking at my horse's foot when I take a picture from the front. And sometimes it can be real subtle that your hairline's just raised like that, you know. And this is why, as just a general guide, not to measure your toes the exact length or nothing else, but as a general guide, why we will measure from the hairline down the center of the toe to the end of the wall and then see look at the shape of the foot here see and so we should see the capsule going like this too well oh, hold on
Okay, I hope I was muted. <laughs> My husband asked me to do something for him. Can Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, could you hear me before when I was talking to him on the phone? Nope. Okay, nope. good. Because I, I didn't know if my, this uh, other, oh, what do you call it, webcam, it's also got uh, speakers on it. And like, I can mute this, but I didn't know if I can mute that. So anyway, I was yelling at my son. <laughs> Not yelling at him, like screaming at him, you know, but like trying to get his attention so he could go to the bank for me because <laughs> that's what my husband wanted. But anyway, okay. So when I'm looking at the front of the foot, I'm trying within reason to gauge that the hoof capsule has a somewhat similar shape, you know? And so if I look over here, see now this should be like that. And if it's raised, and so this is why we'll measure the center of the dorsal wall and then go, go over two inches and see if it's in general about a fourth of an inch uh, difference in this measurement here. Okay, but it, this is not just about, you know, measuring this, that, and the other thing and cutting it to that. It's about developing an eye for this anatomy and uh, pictures do that. Taking pictures and looking at them, um, learning what the foot is supposed to look like, learning to recognize it. It takes some time, but the more you do it, the more you do hoof and hand and do the pictures, the more you will start to recognize this stuff. So anyway, so this is just... Um, because, see, I was talking um, to a friend of mine, okay, and she thought uh, because of this one wild horse that there was a dissection on and it showed his soul and he had a three and a half inch dorsal wall with a good inch of soul under there. Well, it'd be from here, right? <laughs> and uh, so she thought that that I was teaching that the dorsal wall should be three and a half inches. No, um, that is what a horse who is ideal and and he's got an inch of soul has. He's just an example um, of what we would like to see our uh, horse's feet eventually develop into. Now, right now, uh, you know, the average length from here to here on these horses is about, I don't know, I probably got a measurement in here somewhere, um, two, two and three fourths inches from here to here on a regular size horse, maybe a, a more like on these big warm bloods and stuff like that. However, when Gene Ovenick did his research on the wild horses. He never saw anything that was over three and a half inches. So, uh, and there's some big horses out there. You know, uh, if you look at some of them wild horses, they're a mixture of draft, okay, and thoroughbred. So, you know, that's kind of like a warm blood. So, but they could, that's not to say they don't have longer wall see but this is learning to read the anatomy not just a measurement now i just have a quarter thoroughbred all right and the horses that i've done uh besides ponies um morgan uh appaloosa uh, quarter horses arabians thoroughbred okay those are the feet that i have worked with and so uh, I've never done, a, I think I did do a draft horse once, <laughs> if I remember right. Oh, boy. So, you know, so the measurements are just a guide. And what we really want to know is we want to learn to recognize shape. You know, this could be a pony's foot. This could be a draft horse's foot. You know, all I got to do is look to make it that way is do this. Just a second here. So. What we're really 
learning um oh there was a word i had for it what was it okay see let's admit put it like this okay so there's my pony's foot okay that might be a welch there we got a cob there's quarter horse uh there's warm blood <laughs> And there's a draft, maybe, you know. Do you see what I mean? They all have the same foot. Now, um, I think on some of the draft torches, and the, I still could be, I don't know. I'm thinking these, especially front feet, are way steeper than what we ever were, were taught. In fact, I just have this sneaking suspicion. But I know that, like, uh, on this Morgan horse I do, he has got super steep dorsal walls and no he hasn't got club feet um and i just think that we're used to seeing like if we look at this just a minute here okay where are you hold on well usually it says i can share well here just a second it's not giving me all the things here. Let's just go forward a bit. Okay, well, I'll just show you this anyway. Anyway, um, God, I'm looking for this word. I'll think of it later. Never mind. Okay, but anyway, just in general, you know, it's based generally on the inner foot that that is why we map um so we can keep our bars in alignment you know you say bar there so anyway done a lot of measuring on different hoof capsules and stuff like that so we're just doing a general uh and you have to use common sense too if you have some <laughs> sometimes we got to develop it Okay, so I'm getting out of there. I'm going to go back to my horse. Um, the second hair. I got to find me. I don't know where I went. Oh, there I am. Okay. Okay, so. So um, on this foot, uh, years ago, I would trim the frog. But I did not realize that it now look here, you can even see this bulb is wider over here. See that? That's what happens. It pulls the bulb out. Um, but what happened to me was that the frog kept moving out like this, and uh it started filling it filled this area up. And I have pictures somewhere, but it'd take too long to go find them. And uh I people wind up trimming to the distortion. And then that just perpetuates the distortion. Like the frog, the bulb is pulling out, the heels pushing out, the frog is being the frog corium is being pulled over. And so so uh the frog just gets wider and wider, and we just trim to the distortion. Well, my frog kept getting wider and wider. I didn't really realize that was going on. And it filled up all this area and the bar kept growing this way too and laying over the soul and so one day uh i kind of got an inkling to take some of this frog out and uh i think that's when i started thinking uh we got to map frogs too see um which i don't think i've been doing that i think i need to um to add that i just i'm just so used to doing it that i i haven't told people about that but you have to map these frogs too so that you you know where their basic lines are and but you got to remember that the frog corium gets pulled over that way so you have to understand you know when you're getting kind of close to things but what had happened was the bar had totally laid over over here and it was cracked like like this is just a dirt line along the bottom of the collateral groove but that time the bar had grown way up here it had laid over 
And when I removed the frog, it was literally cracked and broken off. And I was, I was so surprised to find that. Because you see, this just dis 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 bleh, disguises. It disguises what's going on in here. And so uh, I trimmed the frog back. And I thought, well, the bar is cracked and totally off. And so I just had to take the bar off. Now, that doesn't mean when you take the bar off that uh, you're taken into blood or nothing like that. Because you can remove bar wall and still have a layer of bar wall or even uh, lamina there. But also what happened was when I removed that and you can see the lamina wants to grow up over over that area now too um see but when you have hoof in hand and you're looking at that um sometimes you don't know quite you don't quite see it that way obviously i didn't or i probably would have removed some of this here so but what'll happen is when it lays up over the soul then the soul can't grow and so if you do remove it then the soul will be very thin underneath okay all right so that's just for reference there yeah see that's lamina growing up see see how it could grow it could grow up over the whole soul there this whole soul platform here needs to be cleaned up now again this is a foot i trimmed a couple weeks ago and so uh what i want to do is i want to go back and look and see what did it look like to me at the time that made it so i didn't trim that out you know because this is my problem here so let's let's leave that there and i'm going to go back here Linda, before you leave this picture, can I say something? Yeah. On one of the sites I had read all oh, a year or so ago, they said when you have a bar that's laying over the sole like that, rather than trying to, to trim the bar off and you run into thin sole, they found that they would score oh, through, yeah. through, the, through the bar where it's supposed to be and then let the, the dead part then just fall off on its own. Oh, so you yeah. Soul. Yeah, yeah, that is, yeah, okay. I Yeah, and I've heard that before. I forgot that. That's great. Yeah, well, that, hey, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, okay, so let's go back and see what I thought I was looking at. Um, let's see here. Find the other trim. Okay. Let's see, that's 103. I'm looking for it here. Okay, that's not it. 103, 104. Okay. Just a second here. Well, I don't know if this is it either. Just a second. Well, it might take me too long to find. But I'm going to do that as soon as we're done here. I'm going to go out and get him and do that right there on that spot. Because the reason I probably didn't is because... As I got to doing it, the sole was pretty thin and soft right there. So anyway, we need to move on. Um, hold on. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, okay. Now I know why I can't find my pictures because they're on my phone. I did. I, Put those on my phone that day. Just a second. Um, let me find them here. See, that day I trimmed that foot and I just took pictures on my phone. Okay, I found it. Just a second here. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So I'm going to send this to myself and I'm going to show you what I was looking at because because this is like a week or week or two later. Um, just to see, share. I'm going to send it to you, Marilyn, because I don't know how to send it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can send it to me. Maybe I'm not going to know what to do with it. <laughs> well, and then I'll just get it, get on Messenger and get it off there. And whatever works. Okay, let's see. All right. So um, dun, 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 dun. let's go back. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Facebook and get the picture so we can compare them and see because that's what I was doing. I was taking pictures of this foot first because I wanted to see uh, what the change was. Um, to see here. Okay. I had to log in. I wasn't on Facebook. It came through on Messenger on my phone. It's an interesting looking foot. Okay. Um, okay, so save image and I'll turn it over. Okay. Well, this will be interesting. Just a second. I'll find that other one. Say, so seeing what you leave and what you come back to. That's the interesting part. And I wanted, you know, I it had been, see, it had been eight weeks since I trimmed him. So, just a second. I got to put these two together so you can see what it looked like then and what it looks like now. Hold on. Okay. Okay, let's see. Now, new share. Okay, there, you see that? So on yes. the left is when I trimmed it and what I left. And then on the right is a couple weeks later. So, uh, hmm. well, you can kind of see why I really didn't want to go any further, but you can also see how that kind of, I don't know if it's what's going on there exactly, but I just wanted to look and see kind of to compare what to come back with. So this is something I do a lot is uh, when I have a problem foot or any foot, I always take pictures and I always compare the next time, you know, and um, anyway, that's just something good to do. So, um, hmm. okay. But Linda, yeah. Can you see the heel is coming back inside the, as we see the right heel, you see, the, there is a change. On this heel right here, it look it's yes. not as curved, is it? No, like, it's not anymore. Let's see. Let me do a new. Uh, it's coming where's... inside. Okay, so this is the old, and this is the new. It does look more curved. Well, especially on this one, this one looks real curved. See, because this is something that you're straightening out too. Because when and the heel. The difference in the opposite 
Hill. This one here too? Yes, this one. Okay. Well, this area looks uh, wider. And here's something too. Now, uh, me personally, I do not bevel past here. Okay, I don't bevel any of this wall here from about, I mean, I'll knock off the sharp edges, but like to here is beveled. But back here, I don't bevel any of no, this. I don't, I don't speak about beveling. I speak no. the shape. Yeah, the I know. I was just adding that. Yes, yes. Let's see. I don't bevel skills either. But the, the shape is changed. I think so. I think so. It looks like it's gotten uh, a little wider back here, but you know, because the, bulb, the bulbs are different now. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I think that the back of the foot has widened up. You see, it's been really wet here. So. Okay, so let's see. I don't want to uh, get too carried away with uh, these evaluations here on me. I want us to go to the video. Let's see. Close that out. Go to the videos. Okay, this is other foot. And so these are all the pictures I take. New share. Oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. I thought, now, did that change? Yes. Okay, so it's changing as I do this? Yes, it is. Okay, good. So I took a ton of pictures. Now, as I said, it, it's been like eight weeks since I trimmed him. So you can see how much wall is standing up there. Now, I, when I nip, you'll see that I take hardly no heel, but it, then I get wider as I go around here. Let's see here. Look at that frog. I'm, and of course, you've got a lot of periopal funny stuff happening here too but um because his his the back of his foot is still being released okay so i measured his foot let's see that's the right one and he is right at three and a half inches but look how much sole is above the wall or, or wall is above the sole see it was interesting letting him go for eight weeks to see what his feet would do it wasn't on purpose <laughs> no. it was one of those things where uh i just couldn't get to it you know um but sometimes that winds up being a benefit it gives their feet time to adjust and stabilize and and then gives you something to work with now something that marilyn and i have been talking about is what goes on in these toes and how the sole in the toe seems to be a little different, just the way it grows. Um, uh, like you notice how pointed that is there and how it's higher. Um, it seems you've been finding that too, right, Marilyn? Yes, I have. Yeah, that these little points grow. And I've noticed for years that there's something about this sole right in here that's different and it would make sense that maybe it grows more because what area do they wear more it's the front of the toe right so it would make sense that the sole in the toe also 
would grow more. And so that uh, lets us know too that, and I, this much I know, once you start getting good heels and start getting good soul, you have to learn to manage the soul. And so what I did in the last trim and what I did in this trim was I scribed this out. I did, I purposely took that point out um, to bring it down more to the level that was over here and over here. Because you see, if I'm right, and this does grow more, and you can kind of see it the way it's pointed like that. If it does grow more, then what's going to happen is, well, every time you're just going to leave your toe a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Well, then it's going to get all compact, and they're going to say, that's toe callus. Don't trim the toe. See, that's what a lot of us were taught. Uh, don't trim the toe callus. Well, it's not a toe callus. It's a convex sole ridge that they didn't know the horse had all around the foot. And so you have to learn to manage the sole in the toe and in the sides of the toe so that you can maintain the exact shape of your horse's foot. Otherwise, you wind up with a round foot or a square foot or a toe too long, uh, pillars too long, things like that. All right. So, so um, another thing I'd start doing, save your old socks because <laughs> yeah, they come in really handy and stuff. And you can wash their feet and then wet the sock and put the sock on there. And, you know, if you want to do too, you can put a plastic bag on there. Just to let that moisture get to those feet. Look, it's Mickey Mouse. Looky there. <laughs> My horse is an artist. <laughs> Look. That's a good place for Mickey <laughs> here these days. No kidding. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Yeah. So I measured all his feet. Um, now, remember what I was showing you earlier, the internal foot? Okay. So what do we got there? About, uh, what is that? Three and a half. Okay, now now look, I don't think I have maybe a little jamming over here, maybe not. I don't know. This is my problem pillar on him, always has been. But uh, it's getting better too. For as long as the foot is, um, that it doesn't crack more. See, I doubt if I'll ever fully get rid of that crack, but you never know. But it's it doesn't hurt him. So, okay, so then over here is three. What are you over there? So there you're about three and a quarter. So anyway, but in general, you see how I'm using this stuff, reading this stuff to try and kind of not cut his foot to a certain amount, but to help me know um, if we're in the general vicinity. And then if we're not, you know, uh, what I need to do. Why is it like that? Like if I come in here and and this this is three and a half inches right here. If I come over here and this is three and a half inches, I know something's wrong. And so um, a lot of times you'll see ridges here. Now you you see you actually do see a little ridge right here. That's there because his feet are actually kind of long, and so the feet try to they compress. The wall compresses. And then you'll get these little rings because that wall is trying to self-level. And um, as the wall is jamming up, it's kind of compressing so that uh, the it, if at all possible, it tries to stop the wall from jamming up into the coronary band. So let's see here. Yeah, it's been a while since I trimmed. Look at, and see, this is awesome. Now, if we were to go, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if we were to go, I think it's like, I don't know, some sort of fungus or water ringworm. It just showed up. It looks um, like a bug bite. 
Uh, yeah, but it's like raised, like, and grainy, like a wart. Okay, but look at look at how the frog is totally engorged with water, and has swollen up and spread the bulbs apart. See that now. Um, hold on here because this is real important because I want to show you a picture from when it was dry. Okay, so just hold that thought. Maybe I got two pictures like that. Okay. Yeah, let me go find a picture from a before trim uh, from a couple months ago when it was dry. Um, let's see here. So you can see what the back looked like. The difference when you have water, you know, when you have moisture, that's why I call the rainy season corrective trimming weather. Because that's when I see the most advances on these feet. And whenever I have purposely put boots on to get moisture to the feet or something like that. Um, just a second here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this would be great. Okay. Now I have to take these two pictures. This was this would be after a trim. So when was this? Oh, that's that's when it wasn't taken the right date. But I know it was over eight weeks ago that I had this. Okay, I'm gonna show you a second here. The difference Oh wow. The second air. And of course, uh, the picture I'm showing you is the after trim. I had trimmed out from between the bulbs a little bit. Um, so, okay, just a second. Okay. Second. What is this? May. I don't do it. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Okay. New share. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now you see that? Now, do you see? Here's let me let me do annotate just a minute. If I can find it. Okay, draw. I've okay, just, so huh? I've got just I have just the opposite going on. It's been wet all winter and spring has been terribly wet and muddy and now it's drying out. So I've got just the opposite going on. Oh, okay, so it's kind of shrinking up. Yep, and hard as a rock and on the left hind is just terrible. It's like a rock. Yeah. Now this is a front foot, and so um, so you see here. Here's the bulb. This is a bulb right here. Okay, I'm not drawn on any of the skin. Just a minute. Hold on, because I want to show you. Yeah. I'm just going to clear that, clear that. Hold on. New share. Okay. Okay. See this? Here's your bulbs. This is just what you're looking at there. Just a minute. I'll turn it over. 
okay? So, so here's your bulbs right here. This is between the bulbs, right? Right here. This is where your frog stay grows, right in here between the bulbs. And this is up in the back of the foot. Let's see. So, so again, when I'm looking at these pictures, okay, I'm looking at these bulbs here. Now, periopal skin grows here and connects it to the leg right here. So this is that area up between the bulbs. And this frog is supposed to grow way up in here. And it's called the frog stay. And it uh, pushes these bulbs up, pushes and supports the digital cushion is right here. OK, see, they teach that you lower the heels to force frog pressure, regardless of how thick the frog is, and that this pounding builds up your digital cushion. No, it don't. This capsule, all this capsule, it supports the foot correctly to support the digital cushion and the digital cushion and the frog work together for the suspension. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this picture again. But you see what moisture does? So they've been raining hair off and on for about two weeks. And uh, and so I thinned this out because this is periopal. It covers, periopal covers the whole, it crowns the foot. It is the crown. This is all periopal that you're seeing, but right behind it is frog a frog that is is growing and uh look at how let's see if you can see okay look at how this area looks fuller because this frog grew and pushed the digital cushion up it's pushing the digital cushion up where it's supposed to be and then the pastern here descends onto the digital cushion, which then descends onto the frog pushing down and it's all pushing back up to help the horse have that spring in his step. So um, anyway, so I showed you, here's the foot. That's between the bulbs right there. And then all this is periopal skin. But this periopal skin is only supposed to be back here. But when the heels are trimmed out, it gets pulled in like so, and it'll grow over the whole frog. And that's good because it helps the horse uh, keep his hoof capsule on when you're removing all this uh, the heels and taking away the depth and um, otherwise this hoof capsule would come off all these barefoot horses if it weren't for this prairie opal they'd be pulling their capsules off all the time as it is they break heels all the time they're abscessing all the time all this other stuff oh okay all right so let's go back Linda, I was thinking uh -huh. the forces that support the flexor tendon, ten, tendon. Tendon, yeah. Well, can you imagine how high the force is that it has to push back the whole foot when the horse... Uh, runs or uh, trots or uh, walks oh yeah yeah the the force because this is the area that pushes back the the tendon yeah yeah well like when i i've done dissections and of course i'm weak you know so so but you just try and take on a decent foot you try and take and push that pastern down um well, when it hits the fat, you know, this is all full of fat in here. Okay. Yeah. 
and of course it's held in by the skin not only the by the hide and well the skin yeah and so when that pastern presses into here i mean these cartilages spread slightly apart the pastern pushes on to all this fat and it's just the pressure um that is being uh exerted onto the fat and then the which is the digital cushion and then the digital cushion onto this whole frog here um and the frog it has these groove kind of things to where to where it kind of pushes down and gives and but it's all pushing up it's all forcing up at the same time so that helps the tendons and so without that um, the tendons don't have the help they need and they're just working all on their own. And that's why you see these horses have tendon problems. Okay. Plus so the weight of the horse itself. Yeah. All these masses of uh, flesh. Yeah. On the back of the horse. Can you imagine how, how, how much the weight is on that spot yeah um and it well and it 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 keeps a constant suspension so that there's no bottoming out like if anybody ever if you were at a car where the shocks or the struts were worn out on the suspension system and you go over a bump and it's just boom like that you know Okay, well, anyway, I wanted to look at the bottom of this foot. Okay, go back here. Now, uh, like I said, it had been a while since I trimmed him. So he had big lumps here of soul, not because they're supposed to be there, but because I he lives on a soft sod pasture. Okay, and so he doesn't wear it off. That is uh, why it's there. And so if you have a horse that that never gets trimmed and uh, uh, he doesn't wear it off, then this will just build up into big lumps. Well, that's like having a rock in your shoe. And I have pictures of dissections where horses had a lot of built up sole in lumps like this. And uh, when you take the hoof capsule off, the sole corium that grows it is damaged because of these lumps. Because we looked at the inner foot, right? Does it have lumps on it? No. But a lot of times what they'll tell people is, oh, well, uh, I, I removed the lump and it came back, so it must want to be there. No, it doesn't want to be there. If it's not on the foot, you know, if it's, and you look at, at the good feed of good wild horses, you're not going to see big clumps and lumps right there. See? So, uh, yeah, so I removed that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, hold on. All right. So I was just measuring the wall because it's been a while since I trimmed this foot. And uh, I just thought it was interesting that a piece of periopal got scraped off. And uh, it's about as thick as my fingernail. And what the reason that was interesting is because that would be normal periopal. Um, because on my pony who is foundered well uh mechanical founder from uh trimming induced laminitis from years ago of barefoot trimming all right on her the the periopal is super thick super thick because the more you trim the heels out the smaller the capsule gets the more uh the periopal band, and it is a band around the whole foot, 
it shrinks as well. And as it shrinks, it gets thicker. And so it grows thicker over the over the whole wall and over the back of the foot and over the frog to try and hold those feet together. Now, see, you got a hoof wall under there, but that's where your wall is the thinnest right here in the coronary band groove, which is kind of an arc like so. See, about as thick as my dirty fingernail. Do you know what caused that piece to come loose? What? Oh, you know, um, you know who knows? I might have nicked him with my my hoof stand or something. It's 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 his feet were wet. See how white it is. You know, or who knows? I might have I might have overreached on him with my foot or something, because the periopal is so soft from. Uh, the feet being moist, and so it tears more easily. Sure. Because otherwise, man, it gets hard. There's my neighbor's donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, see how moist it is? So here's the other foot. And again, see, same thing. I'm looking for shape, and of course... On this foot, I have a similar problem that that lateral heel, I trimmed that out more, which pushed the wall out and pushed the toe forward. Um, now look at how wide that is. I just think I love water. I love what it does to the feet. You know, um, it's so good for the frogs. Um, see, and I'm really happy with what I'm seeing in his cartilage. So what am I looking for here? Eventually, I'm looking for this whole area here to move back and and these heels to move back further and support the bulbs. But I'm not going to cut them there. You know, I'm going to let this foot keep developing and put the heels there as I maintain a uh, consistent each trim. Now I see that, you know, I really like the elevation I'm getting here. And I'm really liking the, the uh, angle of the dorsal wall. And I, I take a, the pictures all the way around. So you know, you can't come and say, well, that's at a different view, blah, blah, blah. So you take enough pictures, you're getting a good idea what's going on with that foot. You know, see that periopal just letting that frog get big and thick there. Okay, so see the sole in the toe? Of course, here's the thing, too, got to remember. Um, um, that is, I bevel the toe more than I bevel the pillars. So when the growth comes back, you're going to see less wall at the toe. So I have to remember that. And, you know, we, we all get to knowing these feet almost better than, than our own hands. I'm really liking... Uh, the consistency of his bars now. Okay, so uh, this used to be a lot more curled in than it is now. Um, this is still a work in progress, straightening out this heel here. And what I like, I, I never liked this view until now. Because what I'm seeing is I want this to come out of this foot. I want to be able to see this. Okay, now I could trim that off and bring the heels back to here. Uh, well, then I wouldn't have, a, 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 then I'd just start a mechanical nightmare again. But see why they do that? They want to bring the heels back here. What they're doing, though, is they're actually 
creating a mechanical situation in the whole foot that's going to do the exact opposite of what they want. So now when I take these pictures, what I want to see is I want to see eventually this heel here grow and move back, not by trimming it down. I want to see this piece here standing about here. See, about there. And so that's where I'm going with this foot. Now you can see here how the sole does stick to the toe more than it does in the sides. And this is why you have to learn to manage that sole and the toe. I'm still learning that. And I just started taking these again uh, because, okay, if you, there's a popular trimmer that just loves this view. <laughs> and in fact, that's the only views they ever take is the one I just showed you and this one. Now, what you see here is different than what you're going to see on those feet that they've trimmed the heels out and they got a false concavity. You know, but the, oh, they look kind of nice and pretty. People think they're good, but they got a dead frog and they're only concave. And, uh, but what you see here, you're, you're not just seeing concavity, you're seeing all that anatomy growing, uh, pretty close to the way it should. Like, um, let me go, uh, annotate here. Okay, so right here, that is a sole ridge right there. Can you see it? And then it gets slightly concave here. Now, this would be right directly under the coffin bone right in here. But look at the sole ridge, convex sole ridge. But here's what I'm finding. Used to be a lot more. I had the sole ridge, but it was a lot more concave here in the bowl. And what's happening now that my heels are getting more correct, my frog is getting more correct, all the back of the foot is more supported, the sole is growing better, not only in the sole ridge here, but right here in what I call the bowl of the sole, it's starting to fill up. And so eventually it should look almost level to where it doesn't look real concave. But what you wind up having is you're going to have about an inch of sole around the perimeter of the foot, around here, an inch of sole and then uh maybe even more right directly under the coffin bone um because as it fills up it it can start to look almost level with this right here so you know and i press on that it used to be i press on that with my thumb right here always soft hard as a rock now and get this, it's hard as a rock now in the wet season. How about that? Oh, hold on. Linda? Yeah. I got that phenomenon on Dodo too. I have wet season and the soul is rock hard. Oh, well, okay. Hold on here. Well, here uh, something goes on very seriously. I lost all the concavity and I have this kind of soul now. Yeah, me too. On Dodo. And I thought something is wrong until now that Linda is explaining. All this concavity that came some months ago now is gone.
Well, Linda, go on, go on telling things. <laughs> Ageliki, hi, it's Megan. I think hi, Linda's Megan. possibly on. <laughs> I think Linda might be on a call. What I'd be interested oh. to know is if um, your horse and Simone's horse and Valor, if this is Valor, if um, what the horses are like on um, like rough um, gravel and stones and rocks, if they are completely comfortable with this um, sort of more uh, flat sole. No, Benenitra was never comfortable and will be never comfortable because she has this key tip um, coffin bone and we had no sole practically. But now I had a, a huge, some months ago, a couple of months ago, I had a huge concavity, which um, goes less like the one that Linda sketched now. And I thought that this is wrong, but now I see that Linda is explaining something is going on to my horse too. Yeah, because we're we're real close in what we're doing and stuff. The difference with yours is is she was foundered where Valor he was never foundered, but his feet were totally trimmed out of him. But yeah, he can he can walk on a gravel road and not gimp. Is that what you mean? <laughs> not go hit a stone and go, ow, ow, ooh, ooh. Or, and the thing that I look for is they don't hunt the grass at the side of the road. You know, a horse that is sore footed, he doesn't want to walk down the middle of the road. He'll seek the side of the road, you know. Well, it's, Benenitra will never do that to not to seek the grass. I, I'm not uh, so optimistic about it, but uh, now the concavity begins, I don't know, I thought something went wrong, but now I think it begins to fill in with soul. Yeah. Because she, she, she shows exactly the same as you marked this picture, is exactly like this now, her soul. Yeah, um, it, was, it was more concave. See, if we look at, uh, I'll show you this one picture here real quick. Maybe um, she's gaining some soul. I don't know. We'll see. Just a minute here. Got to clear my drawing. Um, we'll look at a picture. Mm. See, what we're trying to do and what we're really aiming at here, what I want is I just really want to understand what all is going on and what I'm seeing, you know. Um, so, okay. We'll look at these feet here real quick. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right, so these are the feet off wild horse. Does that look concave? You know, no, but this horse had uh, inch thick soles. Look at that. You see that? It's not concave, no. is it? You can see the sole ridge, but then under the bowl of the sole, it's pretty much filled up right in here. See? All right. Uh, even that, that's a rear foot. It doesn't, it doesn't have that concave look like they're always shoving on you, you know, in a barefoot movement. When you're trimming the heels out, it's pulling the back of the foot down and bending the foot. Does that look concave? No, it doesn't. It doesn't, does it? And look at the frog. See? Uh, 
this is a this here is a horse from uh, Washington that died, and uh, somebody took pictures of it. Uh, I, that doesn't look severely concave like what they've been pushing at us, right? You know, and the bottom of the feet, that's not super concave. Um, see, the concavity they push on you is false. Because when you trim the heels out, well, my God, look at the hairline on that. Look at the back of the foot here. Holy cow, Lomba, you know. Look at that. That's amazing. If I'd have been there, I'd have cut them feet off. Linda, what I think is so amazing is um, those feet that you're showing. I mean, they look like they look like hooves. Yeah. <laughs> they look like feet that can traverse rough, rocky, uneven terrain and handle it. Yeah. Um, looking at the horses, I mean, that concavity um idea if you look at it at that angle that you were describing earlier which that uh -huh. other um, popular person likes to show all it really shows is the sort of the bend the sort of unnatural bend in the yeah. foot the unnatural concavity um, yeah. and then trimming off those heels to kind of give it a fake straight look um, yeah. which is just not addressing the problem yeah it's, it's almost to me like all these problems are just coming from the back of the foot. Yeah. At least that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah, they are. You know, and, and you can compare these two horses here. Like, just because they're wild, you know, they're not going to be, uh, doesn't mean their feet are going to be perfect either. You know, like I would evaluate this and um, I would see where she might have worn this foot out a little more. See how it's curved? down there or something happened to where uh that happened then it maybe it's because she's dead and they shrunk up too so i don't know but i would evaluate these feet you know but oh my goodness i'd love to have these feet on my horse you know i mean look at that that's just uh wonderful um but i'm not going to come in and bevel my heels all right because i understand uh that uh, you, the horse, uh, his heels aren't naturally beveled. This horse wore these feet that way. That doesn't mean I should go trim my horse exactly like this. You know, well, tell you what, though, if they would have found this horse instead of the one that wore its heels out, we wouldn't be here today and our horses would all been sound. And we'd have somebody coming in, trimming them and paying them and be happy. <laughs> Life used to be so easy when it was just called the trimmer. Yeah. <laughs> or you had one of those, I had a farrier. He'd just show up like clockwork every six weeks. <laughs> you know. Okay, so uh all right, so oh, enough of that. Linda? Yeah. If you're interested in, I send you some uh, I send you one picture on a private messenger from Dodo, what he's looking right now. Um from okay. the side solar view so okay it could be interesting to see the comparison or the the same situation yeah. on um whaler and uh beninitra okay let's see maybe. maybe it's interesting um okay i see it here let's uh take a look after the picture should we think about taking a break yeah okay we could do that holy cow we ain't even got the video yet um uh okay let's see okay i'm having a brain aneurysm here just a minute um okay share there we go you know uh his foot looks so much better it's just unbelievable how the back of this foot has filled in you know yeah and i'm so thankful um do you have a side view uh yes of course okay. um i send it just a second
do 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 do. Okay. Wow, the toe has come back really well as well compared to um, like if I was to go back, I need to share. I think we need to show the context of this foot. Um, so I'm going to go back in time here. Maybe I have the old. There comparison. we go. Yeah, yeah. To say, you know, somebody might look at it now and go, well, that uh, and think a foot has some problems. Well, all of our horses' feet have problems. My horse still has problems. But what I want you to see is where this horse has come from um let me see go way back do you have a a picture oh that's one i shared with you do you have a picture of of when yeah. he first had the blowout yeah i have some just a second okay see what happened was uh and this is you know we're restoring the hoof capsule when the heels are trimmed out the capsule gets smaller and the foot gets compressed into the smaller capsule and it gets held there by the periopal and so what we're trying to do here is grow in more capsule and release the foot into the capsule that you're growing and the foot gets bigger the capsule gets bigger and uh, the periopal expands, um, but kind of what happened was uh, we got the cart before the horse, so to speak, and uh, some of us were trimming off periopal, um, not realizing that the foot needed to grow more and the capsule expand. And so when you trim off that periopal too soon, and too much, then it gets wet. Well, then the moisture, you see on my horse's feet how the foot expands, okay? Um, then the moisture makes the foot expand. Well, there's nothing for the foot to expand into. There's no capsule that you've grown in. Uh, and so that's, they said, I'm, I'm describing kind of what happened to Dodo, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Just a second. I'm just I'm sorry. I'm just looking for the picture. Okay. So yeah. Hello. Hi Brandy. Hi, so I have a I have a question regarding what you just said. You say that because um, the periopal was trimmed um, and it didn't, we didn't have any capsule grown for it to expand into. Uh -huh. But if the if the capsule was contained by the periopal, it wouldn't it wouldn't expand, would it? It wouldn't grow. So perhaps we have to, you know, yeah, help the hoof expand in in order for the capsule to grow. Yeah, yeah, that so that is right. What, <laughs> so, so what? So you know, you say no, don't. If you expand it and there's no capsule for it to grow, there's no capsule to hold it because it hasn't grown into there. Then, then it's bad. Oh, come on, bad. It's not. It's not ideal. But if you don't let the hoop expand, then the, the capsule won't grow there because it will be bound. So yeah, you know. Yeah. See, the, so you're playing this balancing act. It's it's the amount of periopal you remove and the amount of yeah. moisture that gets to the hoof. So you are playing this balancing act with that. You know, um, just a minute here. Let me new share. I believe I am. Okay. So you see here um, uh, Dodo's picture top left. And stuff. Now, if you took all that foot and you compressed it into that capsule, 
that's what you'd have. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the thing is, what we're learning is, yes, we do remove periopal, but you also have to read the foot, like, how much is that foot bound? How much can I release? You know, do I need to just kind of release frog? And, you know, because something I am doing is as you give, as you start getting these frogs healthy and they start pushing stuff up, um, a lot of times uh, this periopal, the flaps will come loose here. And um, it, that it's taking care of itself in a way. So, yeah, we trim it, but we need to also uh, use caution if we've got a super bound hoof, you know. Does that make sense? Because everything you're saying is right. And yet, uh, yet, yeah, so we, have, we play a balancing act, you know. So anyway, so you see what happened here. Um, and so these are all uh, growing the hoof capsule back uh, on the back of the foot. And now, um, where's that? Let's see, where am I at? Go back. Hey, Linda. Yeah. I'm just seeing that Simona uh, put right front on this picture but it's a left front how are we saying right in front if you sit on the horse or if you're standing in front of the horse my fault <laughs> my bad <laughs> no no it was my bad um i just uh do the the, the wrong the wrong uh, letters on so uh, okay. okay you can't just ignore it because if you're looking at the if you're sitting on the horse your left is the horse's left Yes, okay, perfect, so thank you. Look, you. you look between the ears, auf Deutsch sagt man in Fahrtrichtung. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So is this all the same foot then? Yes. Oh, okay. Should be left front, yeah, this is left front, yeah. Okay, see, so you see the, the, the improvement and because see the back of the foot, <laughs> You know, and so then she has been working to grow capsule back on the back of the foot is what has happened here. Okay. All right. Well, uh, should we take a break? And then when I come back, I'm just going to play videos. The videos of the trim I did take about half an hour. Would that work out for people? Sounds good. Okay. Um, yes. Before, before you go. I sent I've sent you a collage of two oh, okay. months apart. Okay. Of um, Benenitra's hoof about the concavity. Okay. I don't want to discuss about it. I just want you to have a look because I was despair that I lost the concavity and now I think that suddenly it came up whatever you said before yeah. about the concavity and the depth of the soul. Just yeah, have a I look. Don't... And if we have some time, some time, uh, we can discuss it. But just I want you to, to have a look. Okay. No, I'm looking at it right now. Yes, I see. I see. Yes. And stuff. And uh, I don't see. Yeah, I don't see any problem. I see where um, the bowl in the soul. That's what I call it. Bowl in the soul. Yes. Which is the concave part right under the coffin bone is just filling in. Because the upper photo is uh, three months ago. Yeah. And there and you can the see. Lower, uh, the concavity. Yeah. I had. Okay, I'm ashamed because I'm. Uh, I have so filthy hooves, but I have no water where I am. So <laughs> let's Sorry. see here. Uh, 
new share. Oh, there we go. Okay, that way I can enlarge it. You see how different it is? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I'm like you. Like, look back here at the bulbs, yes, how they yeah. were curled in like that. But now look how they filled out. Thank See? God. Thank you. <laughs> I can have the, <laughs> my you know my, my um, grapes now. <laughs> I don't I don't see where you've lost anything. You know, I see where this is filled up some. Yeah. See, your soul I, ridge I, is I, still I there. Now, now yeah. one way to tell is also when you press on this, you know, it starts getting thicker and harder and doesn't give at all. You know, so After I think you're doing years, okay. I hope so. Yeah, I think you're doing fine. The back of the foot looks I, great. Back I here. hope so. Nice and it's full, the you know. Um, the frog was thinner here. It's filled out. Um, wow. Enlarging it. But yeah, I just see improvement. That looks good. Okay, so 15 minutes, we'll be back and we'll Thank just watch you. the video of this trim. Okay.
Okay, I'm back. I didn't keep track of the time. I had to run to the bank. Okay, so I want to do these videos. Can you can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Uh, so, you know, I can't say at all that I'm no best trimmer, know everything, this, that, and the other. I'm always, always, always questioning and always trying to understand more and improve, you know. And so um, in this video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you um, what I think maybe a person should do in doing the lighter basic trim, how if you get, uh, happen to get, be getting more soul, like what I'm getting on Valor, um, how you can uh, take a little more to, to, to shape the foot. Um, some stuff me and Marilyn uh, have been talking about is this soul we keep seeing in the toes, the way it grows and stuff. There's something that needs to be learned there. Um, now, the difference between what we do and what anybody else might do is historically, they have believed in anatomical error for centuries. Uh, um, like, they don't even know what the soul is supposed to look like. Um, they think it's only concave. And so that convex, nice soul ridge that grows there, um, they carve it out to force it to be concave. Well, you know, that uh, then uh, the, all that support is missing. And instead, you replace it with the shoe. You know, so what we're doing, we're actually growing the true shoe back onto the horse. Okay, here, I'll shut up and go find these videos. Um, Okay. Okay. Well, we'll start with this one. Let's see what I did. Now, some of these videos, I want to get to the trim video because some of the videos, I decided I was going to video every foot um, just to have what it looks like. So I might play one of those videos. And I thought maybe that's something we should start doing too. Oops. Okay, yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna give you an example. I videoed this one foot, I think. Let's see. Um, did a new share right there. Share sound, optimized for video clip. And here we are. Okay, can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay. I thought I would come in and just measure.
Linda, are you saying something while you let the mouse? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How oh, long have you... I been muted? Well, I don't know. The whole video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Okay, well. <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay, but sorry chicken... about that. Yeah, I was talking through the whole thing. Oh, oh I'm God. sorry. The chicken oh, well. is awesome. Oh, well. Um, yeah, some of this love stuff the stuff I was... What'd you say? I love, love the, the chicken. chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy, they're like little velociraptors right there. They'll even start pecking the frog. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. I was uh, explaining about how um, uh, I had a farrier in California that was a super good farrier. And he, uh, this was years ago. This was like 25 years ago. And he shod mules up at Yosemite Park as well. And I would watch him trim and he always took off more, uh, well, I'll show you here. We'll go back. I guess this doesn't, oh, there we go. He always took off uh, less heel and more around the toe. And as I was doing this, trying to do the same, uh, I noticed, well, I know why he does that, because uh, really, I still just took off the heel to about the level of the sole, but just the way the foot itself grew, there was just less to take. So I found that, I found that interesting, but I remember I would always look at, at his, uh, I'll show you here. I would always look at his, uh, well, at the, you know, this piece here to see how there's less from the heel, but really that's all I needed to take. He always did that and the horses always had heels, but he was a really good farrier. But what I was trying to explain, I'm going to fast forward here a bit, is that I try and do just a basic trim first, try and just level the wall to the sole uh, or about to the sole. Now, in some places, you can level the wall to the sole and you can get a clean white line. In other places where the foot is not right, you're not going to be able to level it. Otherwise, you're going to create a scoop here. You'd have to go down quite a bit in this area of my horse's foot. And then uh, the sole would not be level. And when I mean level, I mean as if you were going to set a shoe on it and there was no gaps between the shoe and the wall so that it's it's level and flush i guess that's what you would call it so that's what i like to do i like to start with the foot doing that and you notice how thick his hoof walls are now i was able right away to take some of that sole in the toe to get down to a clean white line and I still had sole ridge there. You can see it here. I don't know if you can see it, but you see I did take some here where it's white, but then right here you can see it still goes like this. So see that's still the sole ridge. Now there's something here I want to back up to tell you. Wait a minute. Okay. If you were to look at this sole right now, it would only look concave. You would not see hardly at all what looks to be a convex sole ridge here. And that's because as the feet grow and the sole, the edge of the sole is attached to the wall. And as the wall grows out past the sole, it takes the sole with it to a certain degree and so it makes it look like it's only concave but in reality under that is that convex sole ridge and what i mean by that is 
just right here. It'll look just cupped like this, but right under this lip here that's been pulled down with the growth by the wall as it grows is your convex sole ridge. And so as I rasp it, you start to see it up here. See, when we go up here. Okay, stop. Go back a little bit. You see it there? Oh, see it? As I rasp the wall flush, it just barely touched that. And now that area is flat and it will get wider. Now, the, the convex part starts right about here. This goes up. Let me do an annotate here. Okay, so right under here is the coffin bone about to there. Right here is where the convex sole ridge starts. In fact, I can even see it. Usually it's more in the heel. But when a foot has grown like this and the walls are past the sole, the very edge of the sole attaches to the wall and it kind of gets pulled down and it looks only it can look only concave like this, okay? Um, but underneath it, underneath this little piece here that attached and stuck to the wall that makes the whole thing kind of look only concave is this sole ridge right here. Once you just barely rasp into this, you're going to see that it's flat. Well, I mean, it's ultimately round, but because you're rasping down on it, it starts to make this little flat pat platform that you see there. Let's see here. Uh, clear all drawings. Okay. So now I want you to watch just this area of the soul. Let's back up a little bit first. See, I really feel that's very important. Okay, now if you look here, I don't know how well you can see it and I can't enlarge it, but if you look at his foot here, you could look at the edge of the sole here and it looks only concave like that. But again, see, see how deceitful these feet can be. You know, so people would look at that and say, oh, well, yeah, it is concave. Well, you're not seeing what's under this rim right here. And uh, so, okay, so this is what we want to really pay attention to because this is something that you have to really pay attention to and understand is the soul. Okay, so... Now you see it just got kind of a dirty white line here around the whole thing now. Now these of course are back feet. So I know that they are spade shaped more than the fronts. Well, I suppose that'll wind up being wrong. No, I know that's not wrong because I've taken the capsules off and I know that back feet are more pointed and front feet are more oval. Okay. Okay, so just watch as I rasp what happens right here. Now I'm coming down level, but as I said, the sole in the toe tends to grow higher. And I again believe that the reason for that is because, well, they break over in the toe more, right? So they're gonna wear the toe more. And so naturally, this piece of sole tends to grow a little more. That That is my theory. Okay, so let's say you have a horse with thin sole. Okay, now, because I have a lot of sole, uh, in, ultimately, I'm going to take some down more than what you normally would 
if you're just starting out and your horse has thin sole and all that. So let's just say that um, for this, this is going to show when I rasp off here, what would be um, like a trim for a horse that has thin sole. Okay. Before I like tweak it for my particular horse. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to cough in your ear. That was gross. So watch Soul Ridge appear. And eventually you're going to see a, where the dirty white line is. You're going to see a clean white line, which will be yellow. Okay, can you see where it dips down right there? See that again, that's where the sole ridge is, the convex sole ridge. Okay, so see this little moon sickle here? Okay, so again, convex, that's convex under here, but around the perimeter, or let me start that over. Concave, right directly under the coffin bone, convex, right here around the whole perimeter of the foot. Okay. Now I want to shape the sides of the toe. So see, you want to read your sole. What you're doing here, you're reading your sole. See how it's wider here? I can come over here and uh, I can make it wider here. You know, on, let's say I have a horse that is thin soled. Maybe this is all I'll do. And then I'm going to bevel my wall. Again, we do not bevel the heels past here, usually. Don't, you never say never, okay? Um, but for now, okay, usually never bevel the heel. Now knock off, you want to take the small teeth and knock off the sharp edges, okay? Because these hoof, like this would be really sharp. What if he reached over, he could cut his leg. See, so you want to knock off any real sharp edges right here. But I will bevel this wall. Like I could stop right here and then I could just bevel this back, which you'll see exactly how I bevel in this video. Well, probably in the next uh, section of it. Okay, so again, we are learning to read this soul ridge. See how I come over even a little more? That sole ridge is around the whole foot. Ah. Okay, so now my I've hit the sole ridge clear over to here. You see it? Clear over to here. And it gets wider. The more you go down, the wider it gets. Oops. Okay, what I was doing here, this isn't doing what I wanted to do. So I just had this horseshoe and I just wanted to put it on the foot and see how level I was getting things. <laughs> I had to really work at this. I am not a farrier. trying to speed this up a little bit. There we go. So I got this shoe. Just to put it on there and kind of see if it was level or had gaps or 
what the heck what was going on there. I felt like I was getting my toe pretty level. But see, I can get my toe level by reading that, by reading this ridge here. As you rasp it, it gets wider. So if I have the same width here as over here, um, and a uniform kind of width of sole ridge, I should be able to kind of judge if my uh, if I'm getting my foot level and flat. And so I could take down different widths of that. The more the wider that gets, that piece of sole that's right there, the more you're taking your toe down. Okay, so everything I've been doing here is I'm rasping down. I haven't rasped anything back yet. I'm rasping down. I'm just thinking to myself, okay, I'm okay now. Let me go back just a hair because another thing. Ah. Okay, see the white line here that's really yellow? Okay, so I could stop right there now. Now, depending on uh, how right your foot is, how much of the bend is out of the back, how much it's corrected in back, is going to depend on whether you can get, without going deep, a clean white line here and in the heels. Because when all this is bent, um, the, the wall and the sole is not growing together correctly. Ultimately, what I want is to grow it and restore it to the point to where I could come in here, I could rasp this down, have just a thin uh, width here, of the sole ridge going all the way around the foot into the heel and get a clean white line just like this, what you see here, going all the way around and even down to the bars. Of course, that would be from trimming the bars with the knife, but clear back to here. See, uh, on a good foot that is correct, where the heels are not run forward or the back is not pulled down, you would be able to get a completely level foot with a clean white line all the way around. But you only do that if the foot is right. You know, it's what I'm trying to grow into the foot. Now, you could have a white line that looks like this in the toe. You cannot always get a clean white line in the toe even if the walls are stretched and flared forward. You know, this horse, his he's got a tight dorsal wall connected to the lamina of the inner foot. And so, so I can get a clean white line in the toe on him pretty good. I can do more in the fronts than here. Um, the backs are behind. <laughs> I always laugh when I say that. People go, yeah, of course they're behind. No, I mean in the restoration process okay and that's what we call it restoration okay um uh i i personally don't call it rehab and stuff rehab reminds me of physical therapy yuck <laughs> i used to hate to go to physical therapy after an operation but it's good for you but anyway um they would maybe questions now or should i save it for the end um you can ask a question now um it's concerning this um um when the foot is still bent so you have uh, in the quarters on the side um you c do you still rasp the wall down to sole level but not into a basically a, a sole ridge that you don't have because the foot is still bent but do you still 
grasp it down to soul level or would you leave it uh, this the wall higher without soul support in the quarters um, until the foot unbends because for example i have one hoof where um, the medial side the heel is more underrun and that makes the quarters bent obviously so yeah. uh, I cannot get, if I rasp the medial quarter down to soul level, um, it makes like a, 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 a bend. Arch, a bend, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we don't do that. So we would leave that side that is more bent, uh, the wall higher than the soul. Is well, you know, you can, you can kind of try it both ways. Um, I... See, I have always been leery of doing too much scooping here, you know, because I was afraid um, I would weaken this area and make the heel run forward more. Um, so, uh, I, you know, there's been times, though, when I did take that down. But then, you, like you say, you have this arch thing going to, to where, like, if this is the side of the foot, okay, then it winds up being, let's say, my I can get a clean white line here. But then if I wanted to go down the sole here, I'd wind up with something like that. Right? Yes, but it wouldn't matter what it does. If you can do it maybe every second trim or something. Because yeah. somehow, otherwise, that wall also um, kind of makes a bulge in the quarters. And it somehow pushes the hairline up not just from the bending in the foot, but also maybe from the wall that is higher than the sole in that area. Yeah, yeah, that that could be and, and stuff. I've done it both ways. You know, I've taken it down more. I've also beveling it also takes the pressure off of it. Um, uh, you know, I just have to be honest at this point, uh, I'm I'm not sure which is the best way. You know, because I've I've gone both ways. Because what I always have in the back of my head is that uh, basically the soul, yeah, if you're not scribing it out or really cutting it out, it should be the uh, sorry, the soul uh, should be parallel to the coffin bone or the same the same distance from the coffin bone um, in in height maybe i don't know how to explain yeah. it do you know what i'm <laughs> it's the soul is the same distance from the 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 surface the bottom surface of the coffin bone and so if you leave the wall higher in the quarter even though it's bent it's still maybe causing uh yeah tr well uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, except your coffin bone ends right about right about in here. See? Your coffin bone only goes to here. Yeah, to the end of the quarter where the where the heel uh, begins. So yeah. that's actually usually where you have the the yeah, the bending is in also yeah in the heel and then in the quarters. Yeah, yeah, I, mine's gotten better. You know, um, the more the more you get the heel straightened out, then the better this area will be. You know, and I took more off uh, than what you're just seeing here, but you know, I can't give you a definitive answer on that. Because just like the way you're explaining it to me, I mean, you see the dilemma of it too, right? Because um, these feet are not right to begin with, you know? And so what do we do exactly to facilitate uh, uh, remodeling them without, you know, taking away too much stability? And, you know, sometimes I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I just uh, keep going, and I mean, I'm my feet are improving, you know, especially in the back. The more they improve back here, the better it gets. But I liked what you said too, you know, like, like 
uh, every other trim. And of course we take pictures. And so, you know, you can keep tabs on that. Sometimes I've come in and just from the top, thin this out a little bit, hoping that all that would change. So, you know, does that not answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yes, it basically. <laughs> Yeah, yes, it's okay. So I mean, you're not saying uh, I should never, I should not do it at all. So I will just uh, try it. I did it once, and uh, well, basically nothing bad happened. So okay, I good. <laughs> I'll try it again because I can see that that basically the wall is 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 too high. But if I take it down to soul level, obviously I have a scoop. But uh, maybe maybe it needs that to yeah. help the tubules to come back as well, and that yeah. will back because if you constantly leave it higher than the sole, somehow I feel it gets stuck, and then yeah, yeah the wall feels uh, yeah. If you look at it, it's like a, a bit of a a bulgy thing, yeah. So it, I I feel sometimes that it wants to have the space that a uh, yeah, a scoop would would give it. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll try it again. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, I know how you feel because I feel the same way. I do. <laughs> I go. I go through the same decision making process. Should I? Shouldn't I? Well, I'll try it this time. Well, you know. Okay. But just sometimes too, you can try something once and you may not think it works, but then you, it comes around full circle. You try something again and it will work. You know, we're working with imperfect feet. We're headed towards anatomically correct. And, uh, you know, I'm sure as we all do this, we will see patterns and, and people that come after us in the future will have more concrete answers for them, you know. Thank you, Linda. Thank hey, you. Sorry thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think this one is just chickens eating. We don't need to see that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Now that I've got the whole thing flat, we're going to map. Just a second here. Stop. Okay, um, Zoom, share, uh, there we go. Okay, uh, please move this window away from the share. I don't know what that, okay, can you see that? Yes. The tools of the trade there, sewing gauge, protractor, marker. Thought I'd use purple this time. Now, sometimes I might come in and trim my frog up um, first or the apex, but I didn't really feel his apex was laying over the sole here. It seems to be, which is, this is probably a good sign. It's staying. Okay, now, you know why we mark the protractor so that we can center it on this line um, and then okay two dots on the side for the bars and uh, I just bring it up to the inside of the heel if there is one This has worked better for me uh, since I started doing this. Used to bring it to here, to the same side of the frog. I'm judging about where I think uh, without the extra padding, the true apex is just kind of. Now, I must have rasped a little more, maybe, because it, it looks like you can see a little more white line. Maybe not. I can't remember. Okay, so right there, I marked where the end of the bars are. are. There's a little, uh, if you run your pick down there, you'll feel a little bump. Oh, he's measuring right up there. Yeah. 
Yeah, very important to try even there. I'm still a little bit off there because I'm sitting over here. I'm looking that way. But better than I did it the last time I noticed when I watched the video that uh, even with the protractor, my eyes are off. So I think I feel it's pretty important to get that toe in the center where it's supposed to be. Okay. And that, oh, wait, dear. Okay, so the reason this just, I think it works so great is because then you can really see how symmetrical is your foot. Now we know and have to always remember though, that if a foot has been unbalanced for a long time, it could have worn the coffin bone into the deformed shape of the foot. Okay, so there may be only so much you will be able to correct on something like that. Um, but I also know that that uh, these coffin bones are very spongy and uh, maybe they can kind of remodel back. Who knows? Who knows? Now, um, again, uh, on a lot of these horses, you're going to have to, uh, what you call it, uh, map the frog, okay? Because... Uh, because otherwise the frog will come out here and it'll, if this side say is is out then the frog is going to grow in the collateral groove and push everything out that way so you know frogs it, like if your frog it should come and then if it goes out like that you know that something's wrong there so you map the frogs too which i'll show some more of that at another time Okay, now I like to draw a line down to the hairline. And again, this is all based on the inner foot. It's not like haphazard. What I know so far of the inner foot, let's put it that way. You know, maybe we'll change something to down the line. Boy, that was right at two inches. That was pretty cool that um, the little piece I nipped off that called to be nipped off um, was right at two inches. And this is just a hair longer. So I decided I'm just going to keep that there. Linda? Yeah. What's the rationale for, for rasping before you map? Um, I think I would end up with one side rasp harder than the other or something. Well, I mean, you don't have to do that. I'm Me, always, I, I've always I mapped first and then rasp. You can do that if you want. I'm doing this because, well, see, but I'm going to rasp again. Okay. I'm not done with the rasping. I've just done basic to clean up the foot. Okay. okay. Um, uh, once I get everything here and there, I will probably rasp some more. Like I'm going to decide how much I want to take my toe down. Like in this trim, because he's uh, uh, doing so well and has so much soul, I decided I wanted to take my toe down a little more. Um, because I want to to elevate the hairline and help the horn tubules and all this in the heel want to come back and and push up. See, because I'm thinking of how this might help structurally. Because um, that's how I started uh, some of all this with growing the heels was to grow the heels to elevate the horn tubules so the ones in front would kick them back. Not too shaky. Okay, what was I doing here?
Oh, we're gonna just look at the foot. How many of you know that to how to get your horse to set his foot down? Do you know you'd pull on their tail? <laughs> pull them towards you? I suppose everybody knows that. But you know how when your horse has his foot cocked or you want him to put his foot down? You just grab his tail and pull him towards you and he, he puts his foot down. Just a little handy hint there. Oh, yeah. I... I decided, oh, that's what I did. I marked. <clears throat> okay. So if I want to make sure I'm right in the center of the foot, okay, or as close as possible, then when I have that foot mapped on the bottom, I will continue the line down the center of the toe around up the outside right here. So that then when I have the foot down, I can set this right exactly where I think is close to center. So that's oh, all I'm doing here is measuring this now. What do I have now? What did I start? I started with about three and a half inches and I'm going over two inches. And then um, I'll measure that and get a general idea now, unfortunately, that's right at three inches right there. And you want to follow the horn tubule. Now, if, you're, if your foot is very flared out forward, you could have, um, let's see, let me stop this for a second. If your walls are flared forward, you could have four inch wall and your foot would still be really close to the ground. But if you've got tight dorsal walls, you could have a three inch dorsal wall and have uh, three quarters of an inch of sole under your, under your foot. Because as, so you, this is not to measure your dorsal walls. Um, I mean, in a sense it is, in a sense it isn't, because you have to add to it the fact that what if my dorsal wall is flared out? Like if we look at Dodo, okay? He's got an old foot in his toe, okay? You can't really measure a foot like that and take it down to a, a certain level or anything like that. This is more for a really tight, pretty steep walled hoof here. And um, let's see, if we were to go look at Dodo, you, you remember what his toe looked like? See, it's you cannot do this uh, hardly at all on a horse like that, okay? Because uh, they've got too much toe and stuff. And that changes the whole structural dynamics of what's going on with the foot and the sole there. You know, okay. I was looking at the foot and I thought that I might be able to take my toe down that much more on this foot. Now this is a corrective move I'm making on this particular foot because I, I'm thinking I want the horn tubules to stand up more in the heels and to be able to move back. This isn't something I would do all the time necessarily, um, but I'm just kind to trying to judge here. Can I take a little more toe on him? I've already got a little thin piece of sole ridge. And then I realized my camera was over to the side there.
I'm just, and I'm reading the growth rings. I'm looking at the growth rings too. Here, I'm just, you know, marking for you here the periopal band, you know, in correspondence with the growth rings. You know, see now how I was explaining earlier when you have uh, the bare foot, meaning the internal foot, and how when you look at the front of that internal foot, um, let's see here. Uh, let me get a drawing here. When you're looking, remember how when we're looking at the, the front of a, an internal foot with the capsule removed? And I followed the coronary band and it went down like this, right? And down like that. And then we looked at the bottom of that foot and it went also like this. See, so I know just from looking at the shape and form that I'm in the ballpark, in the ballpark. Of course, you know, this, this part here, we're corrected. This is the, his wide run forward weird part that I'm working with. But this is the general shape. Just a minute here. I'm going to go find that and put it up here real quick. Ah. Ah. Okay, here we go, just a second. Um, new share right here. We're gonna go to this, okay. So you see the shape? And down here, see this is where, where they really get out of shape is in the toes. And it all does make a difference, you know? And so, okay, so there's the inner foot. I look at this and then I look at the capsule and I'm thinking, how close am I? But again, I can't just always cut it exactly like that. If I got jammed up pillars and I got a flared out toe and stuff, that stuff I gotta work on first. Getting, getting that toe back, or tight, tight dorsal wall, hopefully. And, uh, you know, and a, a lot of that can wind up depending on what's going on with my heels too. Because the back of the foot, when it's bound and shoved up into the underside of the coffin bone and all that foot's just jammed, it rotates that coffin bone and pushes it back and it can push the wall forward. And so sometimes, I have to get the back of my foot straightened out before I can even get the front of my foot really straightened out. See, everything uh, affects uh, the other parts. Okay, let me go back to here, just a minute, annotate. Okay, uh, new share. Okay. All right. So did everybody understand that about how I look at the inner foot and I'm trying to figure out how's that capsule supposed to look on the outside if it's fitting that inner foot, right? See how that's the same shape? Pretty close. Now, I know I got some issues here and in the back still, but... See, form fitted, you know, form May fitted. Yeah. Um, do you know that the internal foot that we saw in the picture before, is it the medial side? So is it from the front? Is the medial side or the uh, lateral side? Because I saw a pattern, I think. Um. um. Do you know what I mean? The one uh, side it's steeper 
and the other side is more fl flared out. It's it's the same oh, situation. Oh, on the foot, at, on the foot we were looking at. Yeah, the the internal foot that you show before. Okay, let's look at it here. Uh, May I saw a pattern and and um, I'm just asking myself: Is it a right front or a left front or a, a, a rare a hint a hind oh. uh, foot? But is it, is it the same pattern that you saw on so many foots that the medial side is so many times steeper than the uh, lateral side? Yeah. Just a second here. Um, I got to take a quick snapshot of something. Okay. Okay, we're going to go back and look at that foot here. Well, it could change the foot, too. You know, that's what mm -hmm. I was saying. Um, uh, and, well, and I have a foot where that has been changed, which I'll show you here. Just, just a second. Okay, so this foot here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, just, I'm just asking myself, is the... The left side that we see right now is it the lateral or the medial side i don't know yeah. it maybe yeah. you know it but see i don't know <laughs> okay. i don't know i don't remember which foot it was okay you know um but this but is the same see, pattern that we that we saw on so many uh foots mm -hmm. that the uh, medial side is more steeper than the lateral side yeah that's very <laughs> common i know because yeah. We usually trim the heel out of the medial or out of the lateral side because it's right there handy. And you yeah. see you see this pattern also on on horses that are pulling uh, um, uh, carriage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That are pulling carriage or uh, pull the wood out of the um, uh, forest or something. Huh. You see how they, yeah, they do like, um, what means schaufel? The Germans are helping, please. I'm lost in translation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like they have to grab the gravel. So maybe they, they, um, I don't know. I see it on the, on the horses. They were pulling the carriages up onto the castle so many times. Yeah. But I think it's because the way those farriers trim them. Okay, I'm I'm just uh, almost positive of that because um, I did it to all four of my horse's feet, and it was because oh, of the I way see. I trimmed him, without realizing it that I was trimming one heel out more than the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, mate. yeah, that makes sense to me too. You know, yeah, and uh, like like this foot here was deformed. This was a perfect foot. Now. When you take the capsule off, the back falls down. That's how important the heel buttresses are in the frog into holding the whole back of this foot up like that. So this was a really good foot. And this foot was a barefoot trimmed foot. This other foot, or well, maybe that wasn't it. No, no, maybe that wasn't it. No, it wasn't that foot. I'm thinking it's another foot. Hold on, let me find this other foot. This one, this is the one I was thinking of. That other foot was a good foot. Well, that was a front and back foot on the same horse. So they were good feet. This was on a professionally barefoot trimmed horse um, that had to be put down due to his tendons. Okay. And, and in my opinion, due to the trim and how it uh, deformed the foot, which... So I want you to see, well, look at it. Look at the front of it there. The pressure that was on the toe. See how this side is smaller than that side? It's a minute here. I know I got that. Okay, see it? Now, you don't really notice it here as much in the capsule. But look at the foot. Look at the inner foot. Look how narrow it is over here. And the different, how the, the toe is shaped differently. Wider over here 
but in this capsule, it doesn't look that way as much. And this is what I mean too by mapping the frog. Like I would be able to look at this frog and go, that frog is too wide. Okay, because as the hoof capsule was reduced, the size, the heels, or what, whatever those were, um, it started going following the shape of the foot. See, when you trim the heels out, they can contract around in like this, or they can go wide like that because the sh see the shape of the foot. Okay, so the trimmed out heel is just following the shape of the foot like this. His heels should have been back here and had a longer, longer foot. Okay, let's see. Where am I at? All right, so, uh, okay, so map the foot. Map the foot, that's really all I'm doing here in that deal, just to get an idea. Um, first, I wanted to study the growth rings and see how they were. And uh, then shall see if see I could. A, shall we see another picture or also the. Yeah. The photo? Oh, okay. I think I, yeah, I think I got. Let's see if I. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here. I'll just show you. I took pictures. I took pictures after every single thing I did. So, um, new share. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see, new share. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm thinking I can take this off, see? Without any severe consequences. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm not just, and of course, that's after I did take it off, which that'll be in the video. So how does that look from the side? Now, see, I had rasped some. So see, I wound up with a little bit of scoop there anyway. You see, now you always got to remember, and I had to remind myself of this when I did this was, oh, well, you're going to bevel all of this too. So that in and of itself is going to, you know, relieve all this. So, okay, so here's what I took down right there. Okay, so let's watch the video. See, that's not too bad. That's not too bad a scoop. Um, uh, but I was really trying to uh, do a level trim without taking the heel down. I didn't want to take any heel down. I just wanted to lower my toe some because I wanted to elevate my hairline. Um, right here, if I elevate my hairline, okay, which, um, let's see, how would that have been? Well, I don't know. But anyway, if, if I took more toe down, then that raises me up a little here. See, probably raised me up about that much from the hairline here. Being about here, raised it up to there. And so what does that do? All these horn tubules that are like this, it sets them up a little straighter. And then when I bevel, um, they may be more prone to move back a little more and the heel back. Because see, that's what it does. These all kick back that way. Okay, so let me undo that. Wait, clear all drawings. Um, okay, just a second here. New share. Okay, I gotta go find the other video. Hold on. Okay.
Okay. Let's see, new share. And here we are again. Okay. Okay, so now what you're gonna see me do here. Now, I could've just left the foot like that and, and beveled it. And maybe that would've been what I should've done. You know, uh, this, this is good, this could just be beveled. All right, but I decided I want to take out some more of this toe um, for corrective purposes. And even then, I think at a time in the future when the foot is just right, you're going to have to learn to manage the sole exactly like what I'm doing here. That you're, you know, when we looked at those wild horses, their soles were, were shaped. You know what I mean? They kept their their souls in the anatomically correct shape. Well, our domestic horses, their feet just grow and grow and grow. You know, they may not necessarily maintain their shape. Now, I know he has quite a bit of soul in the toe. And if you notice, this is getting wider. This this rim here is getting wider than from when I started. That's what I'm talking about, how you learn to read this sole ridge. How thick is it? How wide is it? How much bowl do you still have in the bottom? Uh, things like that. So I scribed it out a little. I wanted to shape my pillars a little more by scribing. And now I have wall standing up above this sole ridge. I still have a good sole ridge here. There's still concavity here in the bowl of the sole. Now, this is more advanced as a corrective measure from a foot that is further along. Okay, um, you, just a regular trim, you'd have stopped where I was before and beveled. Do you understand what I'm saying, Marilyn? I think so, but I'm, I'm wondering if I should, I have typically scribed Dolly's little toe piece out of there, and I'm wondering if I should try leaving it and see what happens. Um, you could, you know. You know, I I just don't like their toe getting too far forward. Right. You know, um, because that is an important aspect is also getting the toe right. I don't want to overdo it, but I try not to underdo it too. I mean, <sighs> you know, it's not like I can say, well, like, okay, on a horse with thinner sole, what I did before would be just right, okay? What I'm doing here is I'm just taking down more toe uh, because I want him, I want to see if I can get his horn tubules to kick back more and I want to elevate his, his hairline because I think it will help him. Uh, and I, overall, okay, so see, that's all, you know, I didn't take down a lot, but that can be a lot on some horses. Now, look here at how, how nice and steep his dorsal walls are here, see? He has a real tight white line, real good connected. He's got real good sole under his foot here. So I could do that. You you know, you might, if that sole ridge is not directly under the foot, you know, I can look on x-rays and I can see where the sole ridge is clear out here on some horses. That It's not under the foot where it's supposed to be. That's what Dolly's looks like to me on the x-rays. Yeah. And so, um, 
you know, so I don't think you can just let that soul in the toe go. It's my personal opinion. I think you need to keep working on that um, and learn to t take more because her toe looks like it's too far forward. It, it does, definitely. Yeah. And so I would be working on this all to kind of get it to suck in and suck back because I think she's got enough heel now to where it could do that. Just the wall itself uh, coming back and sucking in rather than pushing the whole coffin bone back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, all of this is a constant should I or shouldn't I? type of deal now there are some things that are absolute absolute you should map the feet absolute you should wash absolute um we know the anatomy of the soul we know how the wall fits to the to the lamp the two laminas are supposed to fit together we know how the foot is supposed to be but getting there okay is a is a moment by moment foot by foot heel by heel decision you know um i know how these horn tubules grow how they work how they kick back how this whole area like this piece you see this pigmented piece of wall here this here let me see here let me annotate Oh, come on. Okay, so this piece of wall here. This thing could grow clear up to here like that. You see that? And then look at, you see there's a lot more hoof wall in this here than there would be in this piece here, right? So. I know uh, that uh, I've got to get this starting to be straightened out in the back, get some heel height, and, and then work on uh, beveling this and getting these to start kicking back to get this excess wall out of here. Because if I was to draw, let's see here, you know, this area here. is smaller than this area here isn't it so we know we have excess capsule here that's grown in because and why did that happen because they lower the heels and the horn tubules that were like this wound up like that and so it just grew into there and that's why you got to get these horn tubules elevated. That's why I took this toe down just that little bit extra. And because, okay, another thing that factored in my decision to do that is it is wet and muddy here. So it's soft. Okay. And so um, I know that even if that would have made him slightly tender in that regard, that since it's muddy, it's not going to affect him at all because it's mm -hmm. nice and soft out here, you know. And now we're trying and getting hard. Yeah. Or what if it's frozen out? Oh, yeah. Been there, done that, too. You know, but then you're going to find, too, that once our feet really start to develop and once they the soles start coming in, get into shape, the stuff that used to make her sore doesn't make her sore anymore. That will happen, too. I'm waiting for that day. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Say, um, just a minute here. Clear all drawings. Okay. So, oh, are we in a video? I guess we are. Just a minute. Eh. Now, uh, did you see the symmetry? Just a minute. Where am I at? Eh. What did I even do in this?
Okay. Um, I wanted to just look quick at these. Okay, so you have a moon sickle here. And it's interesting that when you rasp into the soul ridge, you get a moon sickle there as well. Don't you think? Um, in other words, uh, so I'm looking for symmetry here, but it gets narrower as it goes over to the side here because these growth in, rings end before they get to the heel. So that's something I look at too. If I'm looking at the front of this, let's say, and okay, so this is the same distance here. Okay, but it gets longer here. I know something's up, something ain't right. You know, my toe is high uh, on that side or something. So that's another reason why we look at growth rings. Yet, we always got to remember your growth ring could go be going like that. <laughs> you know, so I can't just cut my foot down to that because chances are it's jammed up into here. So what would I do then? Well, I just start beveling the wall here to allow all this to drop down. And what you'll see is this growth ring, you'll see it drop down like that. Okay, then, then I can apply this deal here. You know, looking for, for symmetry in my uh, moon sickle that I got right here. Let's see. Clear all drawings. All right, so let's see here. Okay, let's keep going because I want to get to the. Okay, I think this is the one where I rasp the foot. Uh, okay, rasp the wall. Okay. Oh, yep, yep, this is it. Okay, new share. Oops, there we go. Okay, can you see that? Okay, yep. this now this shows you uh, a lot about what I rasped down on the soul ridge. So you can go any width of that, you know, like, um, let's say, uh, you know, my horse gets sore if I do that. Let's say if, well, then uh, I would do a different width, if any. Let's see. Wait a minute. Uh, da, 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 I need to annotate. Okay. So first if you noticed when I started rasping, at first it was just this much. Remember that little white part there? And then, then as I kept going, I got a little more. It became more like that, this wide here. And oops, lost my annotate there. Where are we at? Spotlight snap draw. There we go. Okay, so I'm just drawing what I rasp down as I rasp the wall down. Now remember that that he grown his feet for eight weeks or so, and so I had almost um, well three fourths of an inch, about half an inch, three fourths of an inch of wall um, growing past the sole, and then I took my nippers and I just nipped down to the to the bare height of what the sole was. And it all looked concave, but we know that it looks like that. But in reality, under there is this convex sole ridge. And so then when I just wanted to 
do a flat rasp. Okay, there was a little more sole in the toe. So I brought that down. And the first thing you saw was this moon sickle thing in here. I could, I should do it in white. See, because that's whiter than the white there. So you seen this little piece. Okay, now as I kept tr trying to level, keep the wall level here and go the same distance down, uh, then you saw it get a little bigger, maybe up to here, maybe a little wider, right to there. But I'm trying to keep the whole thing relatively level. Well, now I got into the white line there, but you know, so, so now you see that with that last rasping I did after the mapping, that I rasped into some of the sole clear over to here and not as much over here. Now, one of the reasons I didn't go as much here, this side is flared out and hollower. Now, my coffin bone ends about here, okay? So this is uh, the heel, and underneath there is cartilage. The heels are made out of cartilage. They move around. And so this is pushed out, and this side of my sole platform, which is your sole platform is in here, is more concave and hollow than this side. So the sole ridge on this side is fuller and actually it's kind of goes like this sole ridge see i can see where that is okay so this side is more hollow than this side so let me undo this again so you see where as i rasp this down i actually found a clean white line clear to here um, I didn't try to force it over here. This side is tighter. This side is more flared out. This is my lateral side with the run forward, forward heel that's pushed the wall out and bent the foot more. And so this side, um, I didn't want to force a clean white line in here because I'm wanting to keep my heel in here. And... Uh, but I, you can see where I got kind of a uniform sole ridge right here. Can you see that when I mark it in white? Just barely. Uh, well, okay. Maybe yellow. Oh, okay. Just a minute. Let's see. Clear all drives. Okay, so here's the sole ridge from here to here. Well, actually, it goes to about here. The soul, whole soul ridge goes right into here. Okay. It, uh, I lost it. Just a minute here. Oh, come on. Stupid thing. Okay, the whole sole ridge goes right into here. This is where it gets concave under the coffin bone, right there. So if I kept going, you see this white line here? That white line, see, because they name stuff, you see this yellow part here? Not the yellow I'm drawing with, but right here. That is called the white line. That's that yellow bio glue. All right. Okay. So then right here, your soul starts right here. So your tall soul ridge is this wide. Um, as you rasp down, okay, you, you might hit it the first time and it, you're just going to get a very thin area like so. Okay. Then as you keep going, it gets wider. And so you got to learn to read this and you want to look at this side like how much have I rasped down from here to here? Is it the same width from here to here? Because uh, except for the fact, see, you always got the exception to the rule, except for the fact that 
This side is flared, heel more, run forward, wall pushed out. So it's out of form a little bit there. Um, except for that, you can uh, kind of use, the, you. well, you can absolutely use this to kind of read your soul and tell how much soul ridge you have. Um, so I wound up kind of getting me some good soul ridge there. I'm not going to push it to get a clean white yellow line there. And then I did less over here because the foot's in different shape right there. It's pushed out, you know. And so anyway, so when you're trimming, look for this soul ridge. Start uh, learning to find it. Find it when the hoof has grown way out and it only looks concave. There's that sole ridge behind there. Um, then when you have rasped it down to the level of the wall, the sole to the level of the wall, you know, uh, learn how to rasp different widths depending on how far you want to go down for whatever corrective measure you're trying to do. And I think in the end, when the feet are all done and you're just establishing and maintaining them, that you will have to maintain this sole ridge um, to where uh, it almost looks like this all the time um, uh, when you trim. You know, so anyway, uh, is that making sense to anybody? What I'm saying here? I think it, so. Okay. Um, it it just has to do with how this is growing from that inner foot. You know, it's growing around that inner foot, around the perimeter like this. Well, I mean, it's tubules, so they grow down like this. Okay, then once it gets past here, it goes like this. And so all around the perimeter here is this number. But when the wall grows and the sole grows, it can look like this. And you don't know that this ridge is there. It just looks concave -ish. Of course, this is the this is the foot if it was standing okay you don't know there's this convex ridge of sole there okay um just a minute here let me clear all this okay so let's see okay let's move on Okay, so I guess I decided to take a see. I'm decide the whole time you're deciding. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I take a little more of this down, or am I going to get uh, rasp happy and take off more than I wanted? I'm trying to be uh, really conservative in there because I want to leave heel. But I thought I'd go ahead and take and see if I could kind of hit that one more time. I think I'm getting a marker so I can mark the, no, I guess maybe I'm going to trim the bars. Oh, I guess that's what I decided to do. Oh, after I trimmed down the apex. Now, see there? I, I still can't sharpen knives as sharp as I wish I could. Is that a nice flexible frog? Now, the thing with me though is I take a grinder afterwards and shape everything to where it looks much nicer. I'll take the sole out, 
smoothed it out. And if you ain't got a central sulcus, you want to try and make a little bit of one. That's what's really helped this foot. When you're trimming your bars, and most of you probably know this, but you just follow the ledge of the wall. Even if it's laying on the sole, you just follow the ledge of the wall. Here's where I cut my wrist. No. I just bought arm protectors, cut resistant arm protectors. Oh man, I need those. Send me your address. I got four pair. I don't need four. Okay, I will. You could be saving my life. We need to save your life. <laughs> I know. I nope. It was the other foot. Never mind. So, and I, I, I like to clean up stuff. I don't want it building up. And look, that's ready to come off, right? Well, if the foot was dry, you might not think it was ready to come off. On a thin sole like Dolly has, would I be trying to take off that stuff or just let it flake off naturally? Um. I I think I would I would leave some of that, you know, unless it was big, turning into a problem at least for now. But okay. see, um, maybe she can just scratch it a little. Yeah, because see, another thing I think of is like because okay, I'm doing this, but then I'm going to take a grinder and lightly sand everything, because I feel like. Um, it may stimulate the soul to grow. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's proved. It's proved oh, already. Um, okay. If, if you use the grinder, um, all the, oh, I don't know that word in English, that little, um, yeah, the it's like. Tubules? No, um, the, the, um, uh, it's like soft cartilage, very soft cartilage just all around your body. Um, I don't know the word in English. Oh, and gosh. They are, they are getting in, in, in. What is that called? In vibration. Fascia. I find out. Fascia. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. And they go in vibrations with the grinder and get it all smooth and let the blood better flow and um, all the minerals better flow. So that's proved already. Okay, well, great. So use the grinder for smoothing out and um, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Okay. Oh, just a minute here. We're almost uh, share again. Okay, new share, where are you at? Okay. Now, a lot of times I like to remap, you know, well, I'm going to remap here because I need to remap in order to do my beveling correctly. And I just like to do it. I want to see, you know, first of all, it's going to let me see, did I take this toe right? Like, look at, look at how that toe, same, it's the same here. As it over here looks pretty good. When my hand is there, you can really see that sole ridge. So I got to remark the toe, especially because of the way I like to bevel the toe. OK, 
Okay, can you see that sole ridge? See, it's a little dirty still right there. There's a dip there. It goes concave right here. But this and uh, 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 this here is rounded, con convex. Okay, so that whole toe and most of the pigmented harder outer tubules, I will take off all that. And the reason you want to do this in the toe, okay, with the wall is because you do not want any leverage as far as I'm concerned. When the, the way these horses break over, they need to roll in the toe. Now they call, you know, an extra heavy bevel, a Mustang roll. We don't do that at all. In fact, by the time all is said and done, even though I take all this off, okay, when the foot is set down, you don't even hardly see it. It's not a heavy duty Mustang roll. Um, and everything is there for a purpose. Now, I might take more, I might bevel more even to the white line. If I'm working on really wanting to get some horn tubules to kick back and stand up straighter to give it more room. Um, or let's say if I have a very asymmetrical foot and the sole is stretched out this way, sometimes I will even bevel past the white line into the stretched out sole in the side. Okay, like if I measure from here to here and it's one measurement and then I measure the other side and it is way further out, comparatively speaking, um, sometimes I will bevel, I will measure this and then take that measurement, put it over here and then I will bevel clear over to that. Um, it's worked. Uh, That's a scary thought. Well, yeah, but this is just all cartilage and it is a scary thought. And it was kind of scary to me the first few times I did it, but it, it had no effect on the horse at all, other than helping this wall come in that had been stretched out because this whole, the cartilage, everything gets pulled out. Um, asymmetrical foot, you know, with the heel pushed forward and that wall pulled out. Um, and then you got all the sole that's pushed out too. Well, how can it all move back? You know, so I've done that a few times. I'll have to, next time, I'll try and pick out some of my corrective measures that I've taken to try and correct asymmetrical feet to show you. That would be great. Um, let's see here. Okay. What I wanted to show here was I wanted to try and show you how I'm going to bevel that toe off. So I thought I would do it from this angle. Okay, see how that looks? Okay, so I want to show you that one more time. Okay, so... See, I'm making it so that there is no leverage on the toe at all. And yet, 
Um, she really still has full uh, wall support for the soul in that area, as you'll see when the foot is turned over. See, it's not a real strong bevel, but it makes it so when that toe turns over, there's no leverage on that wall at all. Linda, <clears throat> yeah. please explain that we have two kinds of, uh, of beveling. Uh -huh. uh, the one that we make on the uh, outer wall yeah, and the one, the this one. Yeah, that's it's and that's two different kind of bevel. Yeah, the like this one, we don't want any. You don't want any uh, leverage on the toe at all, you know. Um, but here, um, you don't. They don't break over on the sides quite in the same way, and so you see how I marked it with the with the purple there. Okay, I'm just taking the hardest outer tubules off which will also give give the wall room you know the horn tubules room to move back but you can do a more um a stronger bevel than this on the sides on different areas um at times when you're really wanting to try and get some horn tubules to kick back and move back and stand up Um, you know, all mine are pretty good. You know, like I've been restoring his heels for quite a while. And so I've got good dike dorsal walls. And, you know, I've still got issues. I'm still correcting the inner foot because, you know, the whole inner foot and the heels and everything get crushed under. So everything has to be pushed up. Now, the good thing going here is I got these massive frogs coming on and they act like a hydraulic jack for the rest of the foot. See, so they're pushing up. And so this foot's going to want to move as long as it's kept moist. So I want to take all these hard. But notice I still have a rim of wall there next to the sole, right? Can you see the rim of wall next to the sole? Uh, Linda, I was talking about the other kind of beveling from above. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show that too. I don't, I don't know if I really call that a bevel, but uh, well, because what? This is how I call but it. yeah, yeah, it's it's a bevel. It's just a lot lighter. Um, I'll do that here in a minute uh, too. From the from the from the top other part. I mean from yeah. the, from the top. Yeah. Yeah, from the stand. Okay. I misunderstood. Because we call both yes, both these things we call it bevel. Yeah. So somebody may be confused about it. Okay. Okay, now um so when you do this bevel here okay you're gonna have very sharp edges okay so you need to finish those off so that they are not sharp um uh not only you know keep your horse safe he cut cut his inside leg or whatever um but also to finish off the foot and to finish those horn tubules so that uh, I just know that that has an effect on how they grow as well. So um, this would be, um, okay, so right here, all I'm doing from this side is showing how I'm taking off the sharp edges that are round that I left when I beveled. Yeah, 
you know, and, and a person could bevel a little more wall than that if they wanted, you know, um, just kind of have to play around with it, so. And again, I still have wall support for my soul. Now, um, okay, now, just a minute. Let me take a picture of this. Hold on. Because I want to show you something. Yeah. Huh. Well, it's not let me. There we go. Just a second. Linda, all those, those socks that you have are all wet. You know, you're keeping the hooves moist while you're trimming this. Yeah. Thing. So yeah. Easy socks on and then you watered the socks yeah well mm -hmm. i you know i have a bucket of water that i wash my feet well i wash it with the hose and then i have a bucket of water and soapy water and a brush and i use that and then so i had that water there so i just got them wet and then put them on and once in a while i may take the foot and i may respray it or dip it in a bucket again or something like that but if you notice when I started, he had white socks on, right? So now he's got black socks on because he, he, I let him go in the yard for a little bit and he decided to turn into an orangutan, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and tear the whole yard up because <laughs> it'd been wet, you know? So he left big divots everywhere and it sucked his socks off. So I had to rewash his feet and stuff but i want to show you this here just a second here pictures um oh where are we concave i have it under concave i just took a snap of that because i want you to see the con it's a different kind of concavity it's not like what they've always shown and stuff let's see Okay, where are you at? Contracted. Well, okay. M. Oh, here it is. Okay, new share. Okay, you see the foot here? Okay, now do you see where it's concave? Right here? Yeah. But yeah. here? You've got this area, the same, about the same width of a shoe that is convex, that is that convex sole ridge right there. See, they grow their own shoe. Now, this area here will fill up even more with sole as the whole foot starts to get right. And so... Um, it is it is this combination of soul that keeps the horse from having laminitis, because what happens in laminitis is they carve this soul ridge out so that there is nothing to hold the wall, and eventually um, the toe the wall uh, goes forward and the the horse drops down through the bottom of the foot and the, there's wall separation there you've got to have this formation of sole to hold that foot together to keep that toe from dropping or rotating down through the sole okay this minute here so let's go back to uh that and see where I'm at here. Okay. 
Now, uh, I think I'm going to put the foot up on a stand here. Yep, that's where we're going next. Because I wanted to show uh, what I do. Now, everybody, you know, people, people are going to have, I do things according to how I think is going to work with the structure of the foot. That's why I don't do a heavy duty Mustang roll. And this is also because one thing I learned about a Mustang roll is that is something that is forged. Let me stop this. Uh, and I can show you pictures of that where the horn tubules literally curl under like that. You figure that baby got up. He was following his mother the whole time. They're not just worn off like you would rasp them. They are literally growing down and curling under. That means that on the toe, the hardest part of the external of this hoof wall is in the roll as it rolls around. And so, the, you know, the combination of that special sole and how these walls, well, hey, your wall can curve out this way, right? For a flare, grow down and curve out that way. Is it a hard stretch to realize that a horse could forge his own feet from a foal, breaking over, turning over, and just kind of round these horn tubules that way? See, that's different. That's a different, that's a true Mustang roll. All right. Um, uh, us just taking and over rasping the toe, making it look like, you know, a Mustang foot. It's not the same. And uh, so this wall supports the soul. They have to be in unity together. And so if you uh, over rasp this, it it is not going to support the soul because as you get into the wall, it gets softer. So you want to leave, you want to take as much and leave as much as you can. Okay. And always use the small teeth. So I just want to take off any sharp edges and round it off. fat arm out of the way. Now, really, the only thing I feel that um, I took off uh, more than maybe somebody might always want to take off would be in how I took it down the toe. Took down. I didn't take back the toe as much as I took down the toe, which automatically takes it back because the wall grows down and forward. All right. So when you got that that picked up and you take it down, it goes back. See there, goes back. And so uh, I think I measured the toe and it was still uh, three inches, over three inches, but we'll see here. So you see, it's not a heavy Mustang roll. Now, now maybe I should come out there because I would like this little piece here, some of this to kind of kick back. So I'm going to go out there in a day or two and maybe renew this bevel 
to kind of still give this some room to move back. But all in all, it's not too bad. So see what I mean that you, you really have capped a lot of the strength of the wall down as far as possible. And uh, just he can roll over in the toe. And look, you got your moon sickle. Okay, so your pillars aren't taken over and becoming square and uh, hanging the foot up. And you've got a nice, see how it rolls? So when that horse breaks over, it's easy. There's no pressure on his wall. Pulling it out like a fingernail, like, you know, you wouldn't want to have long fingernails digging in the dirt. And those heels, you know, they still need to come down and stand up. Okay, so here I saw something. I saw a nub in here. Okay, I don't want that nub in here. Um, so this is a tricky area, this piece right here. Okay, to make sure that it's not uh, higher. Well, I mean, if you're growing heels, uh, you you. You know, you you can't. You're not necessarily going to want to take that down. But I'm just talking about looking for little details. So, but I just seen that with this a little higher here. So I just want to kind of take a little bit of that off right there. See how this one is? I want that one to be about like that too. Those are my shafts. <laughs> <laughs> my shafts. My shafts made us sound yeah. like flatulence. Yeah. And I didn't want anybody to think I'd done that. Sure. So I was like, that was my shafts. Sure. Okay, so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway. Uh, just a second here. I think that was the last one. Let me look. We'll see what this one, a little bit left. Just a second. Okay. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. Just a second. Um, new share. Share screen. Share. Okay. I mean, his frogs are massive. And I'm sure there's Tari Opal there too, but. Whatever, it's doing its job. Just a light sanding. And I like to shape the frog too, like the frog would be shaped. Need to reposition my camera. And I decided I wanted to get some of that periopal right between the bulbs in case uh, the foot wants to expand even some more. Working on the central sulcus. They have a central sulcus, so if if it's totally filled up and and filled up and hard, 
you know that that hasn't been growing for a while and so you just start um, start making boundaries start trimming frogs start getting things moving start um, getting things to growing again I'm going to use a proxon. My proxon's about had it, though. Sounds terrible. See how I'm getting right between that periopal right there that grows between the bulbs? Wow. Linda. Yeah. In your experience, uh, will the next day, will that frog be brown, like what we saw with my mare? Because now you've left it all nice and white, you know, because you, you um, well, you've left it nice and white. And then will that be brown the next day? I don't know. <laughs> when, when was this video taken? Um, uh, About three or four days ago. And, and how uh, have you looked at the frog since I, then? I haven't looked at his feet since okay. that day. Um, In this case, I don't think so. Um, because I know on other feet when they turn brown, um, uh, this, these back feet, I kind of did different than the other feet. And, uh, I don't remember them ever really turning brown. And they stay that color white. Um, I'm going to go out. I'll go out and see today. Dollies turn dark. Do they? Yep, they do. Yeah, I don't know what these are going to do. I mean, this is the best. Uh, these frogs have just really uh, taken off. So I, I don't know. You know, now the other frog is yellow. Um, part of it and white on part of it. So I don't know. I'll find out, though. Okay, great. Thank you. And I, I know these frogs all, these frogs too still have to come back. Um, I don't know, it's gonna be interesting. I wish it rained some more. So, okay, well, that is pretty much it. That's it. So uh, I don't think we're gonna get to any horses today. <laughs> You know, anyway, um, anybody got anything they want to say? Thank you for the videos. Perfect timing. I have to trim tomorrow. All right. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hey, it's been, it's been a great day. Excellent, and, excellent information. I well, thank you. I left an album with, uh, I'm going to uploading pictures of my mare's hooves every every time I take them to that album so that everybody can see. the Great. Project. Okay, so I'm leaving that in the TACT group album. There's a photo album that's called Figrid. And okay. In her in the hoof chat, I thought it might be interesting for everybody to see the progress. So that, any that'll be great. I'll upload we, there, okay? Can we look at those next week? Whenever, whenever he wants. I mean, anybody can have a look anytime. Okay. Comment whatever, and if they want more pictures, I will upload more. <laughs> okay, sounds, sounds great. Everything Thank you. Done. Hey, Personally, ladies. Personally, I'm looking. Go ahead. I'm Andrew. looking forward for 
for Dodo's last photos. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I would send. I would send you the the update. So I send it uh, to Linda, but not to you. I'm so sorry. I no, no problem. Update. Because I'm, you know, I am always very curious about how he is going. He's my uh, hero. So do you know what? Um, I'm thinking about um, the glue irons, but the plastic ones with a little, yeah. with a very little frog support to to get the idea from the last hoof chat, just leave the hoofs for a while mm -hmm. um, and don't touch them, um, but give them, uh, uh, yeah, like a saving or a protection. Yeah. Um, without to have him wet because I'm, I'm living in the wet area, you know, and yeah. um, I don't want to moisture them all the time because the hoofs are stabilized uh, since I put the boots off and um, the wall is um, stronger than before. And uh -huh. also the skin, the skin above um, is, is um, yeah, better. And um, that's the reason why I put the boots off too. And I'm thinking that he's stable enough. And you see it on the pictures that he doesn't crash down like the last time in December. And so I was thinking about um, the glue irons, the plastic things stuff. Yeah. And I, I will do it by myself and I will give you an update how it works. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. There, there's a gal on, on tact who has has done that on her her horse's feet and i have ordered them in case dolly needs to have shoes put on again i i have them on and that's my plan if she needs to be shot is to oh, the plastic with the glue on yeah um you know the the company you, is it hoofstar um i did hoofstar a couple of years ago i wouldn't do those again i didn't feel that they worked out well for dolly the ones okay. i'm doing are from easy shoe Oh, I see. Um, yeah, good but I don't think the Easy Shoe Octo is what I'm doing, but I'm not sure if they're available in Europe yet. They're they're brand new. Yeah, they're from the 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 company is called in Germany Goodsmith, I guess. And um, the the um, Hoofstar were working. Um, I got the Hoofstar on Dodo uh, three years ago, and they were working very well because you can use them again. If yeah, wonderful. I, I couldn't get them to work well on Dolly. She was uncomfortable with it. And it could be the way I had done it, too. I, okay. you know, I don't know. Because, you know, there are two different glues. There are two different glues. There's an uh, acrylate, acrylate glue and uh, uh, two components glue. And the two components glue is not that good as the other one. I don't know if it's a new 